Well, welcome back to BNCMAP. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, we're excited to be back. Happy Thanksgiving. If there are any family and friends watching, welcome. Um, buckle up. Oh, that I never thought about that. Yeah, because I think I assume like some, it comes out on Thanksgiving, right. and they're probably with their family or some little cousins or big cousins. Yeah. Um, well, welcome. Hello, all. Hello, Hi, all. all. <laughs> hey, Brooke. Hi, Connor. Are you ready to MAP? I'm ready to pee. Ignorance is bliss. I'm living in a world of my own, and it's awesome. Oh, I thought I was responsible for 9 11 when I was five. Where were you? In Pennsylvania. Touch grass, might I suggest. We're just going to dive right in today. We're so happy you're yeah. finally here. We've been waiting for you all summer. Yeah. Surely you guys want to hear about our um, merch. Yeah. And what that's what we have here right now. We, um, you know, tomorrow is Black Friday. Right? Oh, yes. yes. I'm sorry. Yes. 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 Sorry. To, yes. Sorry. To, I, sorry. I, right now, it's not Thanksgiving, but it will be when you hear this. That's where I got thrown by that. Sorry to rattle no, your bones, hey, no, girl. No worries. <laughs> Um, but totally, you're completely right. Yeah. So tomorrow is Black Friday. Um, we're stoked for it. We're going to be doing some sharpen and you guys can too. <laughs> we have, we have, if you guys missed the last merch drop, the ethical clout chaser here, which I've mm -hmm. got the hoodie right here. I've gotten so many compliments on the feel of the hoodie. Yeah, that's right. And I had some people wearing both the ethical clout chaser stuff and the binky babe stuff which i've Brooke got has. the binky babe stuff here's the shorts the sweat shorts sweat shorts great to kind of just lounge around in or also leave the house totally up to you, you choose to and leave also the, house. the there's also a tank top that goes with it um but here's also a tote bag i love a tote you can't have too many totes uh -huh. i have a massive tote of totes brooke i was gonna say i've got a tote full of totes under my bed yeah and everyone's like why do you have those i'm like because there comes a time in every man's life when you've got to hit, you've you've got to hand deliver some items. One hundred. And like to to hand a case of beers and a reusable tote to someone, you go from the guy with a cardboard twelver twelve pack of Modelo that you're just handing to like a guy that's like delivering a gift that's gonna keep on giving. I will show up to any sort of pregame with two loose light beers in my and a tote in your tote. But and people are no one are obsessed. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to put yeah. it too. If you're going to a pregame, like, am I going to put these, like, am I going to kangaroo yeah. pouch it with like yeah. six beers? No. No. Not tote bag. Tote. Okay. May, I answer, may I answer your question? Tote bag. You may. Yeah. Tote bag. Tote bag. Can I get a tote bag for me <laughs> and a tote bag for my friend? Sure. I've got 50 under my bed. <laughs> when people come over to pregame, I'm like, anyone want a tote bag for on the way out? Yes. Yeah, so but if you want to steal some, tote bags as what, well. what if you steal something from the bar? Yes. But if you, you toss over your shoulder, you steal stuff. Put it in your tote. Oh, or if you're giving gifts, or if you collect rocks. Tote bag. That's true. The tote bag is the answer. Yeah. So these are available at this time. For a for discounted you. price because it's Black Friday. And also just as, also kind of just clearing out the warehouse to make room for new merch that is coming so, imminently. Yeah. Imminently. Expeditiously yeah, even. Imminently. And I think you're really <laughs> gonna like be addicted to it, so and also obsessed with it. So I am genuinely so obsessed with the new merch. Me too. Yeah, it's so perfect. I agree. But I'm also obsessed with this stuff. So hit it if you want. Okay. Also Cyber Monday. Okay, yeah. Are we doing Cyber Monday as well? Yeah. Okay, cool. So Cyber Monday. Perfect. Oh. Okay, I feel done talking about the merch. Well, good, because we can, we can talk about anything because we have a podcast. Okay. I just want to say really quickly that Izzy is not here today. Right. Which sometimes you don't realize someone's your security blanket until they're gone. Right. So that's exactly what I'm feeling. And she left us a gift, which is making me like feel sick. I know. Of, mi of missing her. So Izzy's I don't even want to read the card. I'll read it for you. Izzy's our producer, um, who is no longer with us. Just to... <laughs> she's not dead. She's no longer with us temporarily. She is For traveling. one episode. For one episode. She's traveling to visit her fam. Um, and ride horses and she said happy thanksgiving thankful for you turkeys love you loads that is so easy love you loads in all caps uh, love izzy 
I miss her and I love her. And, and she gave us a turkey, y'all. If I'm not myself, it's because Izzy's a part of me and she's not here. So she is the truly the best. Yeah, That's so sweet. So anyway. <sighs> Anything new since I saw you yesterday? No. So yeah, we recorded back to back from mm-hmm. yesterday. Um, I don't have really anything okay. to report. Good. That's um, good. Though. I want to. I want to re up on my apology for last episode, talking immediately about my bowel movements. <laughs> and I'm just gonna say it's not gonna happen today. I'm in a great spot. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I can't say the same thing though. I know. Yeah. Well, fine. we our cycles aren't synced. They never are. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um, or they are. They're just reverse synced. That's actually, we asked people today to, like, if you had to explain B and C to someone who doesn't know it or watch it, like, good, what would you say? Yeah. That's a good way to put it is, like, two individuals whose cycles aren't synced talking right. to each other. Right. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a great way to put yeah. it. Yeah. Because we kind of don't see eye to eye. And that's where. Yeah. That's where. Our, our bodies and our minds. Our bodies, our minds. Is there anything left besides our bodies and our minds? The physical realm. The soul. That's where I think we do see eye to eye. The physical realm or no, the, the soul? soul? The soul realm. Spiritual. I think we're spiritually connected. Do you think so? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, and there's no other reason. Hit, hit this note for me. <laughs> Give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. I want to get lost in you. No? Why? Because I'm free my soul. I want to oh, get lost. I didn't, do you I know think, that song? Th- yeah, I know that song. Well, then why didn't you join? Because I didn't know why you, why you jumped into that one. When God's choir sings, <laughs> would you not join in with me? You're God's choir. I'm gonna. I'm a part of it. We're all a part of God's oh, choir. Oh, I see. I I don't. I haven't been to church, so I don't know that. Take me to church. That's what she's begging. That's the next line. T- give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. I want. I to did think it was Beach roll. Boys. Oh no, beat. Give me the beat. Oh my God. Wait. Pause. Are they saying, give me the beat, comma, boys? Give me the beat, boys, yeah. Not Beat boys are not a people? The beat boys do not exist at this time. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> there's probably there's probably a couple of freshmen at USC that are trying to break into the wow. DJ scene called the beat boys, but at this time, I don't know that. I thought it was the beach boys with a possibility of it being the beat boys, but I never thought about beat, comma, boys. Nope. Nope. Cool. Um... Well, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Wait, did you have did you have anybody that gave us a good description? Oh yeah. As to there are some good ones. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, one of the questions that we asked people yesterday on our stories was, "How would you describe B and C to someone that doesn't know it?" So got a few good answers. Okay, hit me. Um, and these, Connor, like I don't think they even maybe warrant a response. From you, some might, but some I can just read to you. I like when you have things that you're able to listen. If I so choose, I can chime in. Yeah. Okay, first and foremost, and like most frequently, we got a podcast by TikTokers. Hate it, personally. Oh my God, okay. I hope that that's not what you're saying. Did you block that person? No, I didn't, because I would have to block 800 people. I blocked one person that responded. Okay, You'll, you'll tell us when we get there. She just said I looked bad, and I said, okay, well, you're blocked. Okay. You don't have to look at me anymore. This one's In fact, ni- you're not allowed okay. to. This one's nice. <laughs> Hanging out with two high friends who get you but know very few facts. Facts. On God, You yeah. know what? Brooke, there's a fog rolling in. Fact facts on God. on God. Facts on God fog. Is that a... Oh my God, is there a fog rolling in? Because mm-hmm. that's facts on God. I agree. Okay, a lot of... This was second to um, a podcast with TikTokers. Uh, it's a podcast about nothing, but also everything at the same time. That's fog. That's fog, fog mode. Yeah. yeah. Oh, why? Your glasses are kind of fogging up. I know. I can't unfog. Okay. Two micro influencers just talking about stuff. Do you identify this as gonna, micro? No. Well, this is going to, I guess, yeah. In comparison to. Someone, everyone's micro in comparison to someone and someone everyone's macro in comparison to someone. Yeah. Are there parameters? There probably are, yeah. If someone worked yeah. in like influencer marketing, they could probably share that with us. I think I don't think we're. I think I don't know. This I podcast don't... isn't a micro influencer. I don't think it's not actually. No, I wouldn't say that. But again, micro is relative, right? Okay. Oh, I loved this one. A guy and a girl who make sense of the world in an abstract way. Making sense in an abstract way. 
I yeah. love the use of abstract. I would here. say that we beat around the bush quite a bit. That's not what abstract means. We're vague in our answers and our definitive answers. They're vague. I don't think that's what they mean by abstract. I think it kind of just means like unique. And not like linear, you know? Yes and no. It's abstract. Yeah. Okay. okay. This one kind of like got me thinking like existentially. Two opposites trying to explain life to each other with no idea what life means. Okay. I never ever want this <laughs> podcast to be, we're just adulting. We're figuring out <laughs> life together. No, I'm good. I, I'm not, I, I don't need to figure out life with anyone except like how to cancel my Wi-Fi without getting on the phone with Spectrum. That's the only reason I would need to li like listen to a, like, I'm just a, we're just in our twenties and we're, we're figuring out adulting. I don't want to figure out adulting with anybody. So I don't want that. I definitely don't want that. Okay. I want to dive into, you know, like, um, you know, the rock of Gibraltar. You know, When like, they said life, a, I didn't take it as adulting. Okay, good. Well, I, that's what I don't want. I just took it as like, we each have our different versions of life. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. Of how we exist. Right. What was the, the thing that I used to say? That would make you mad. Oh God, the human experience. <coughs> the human thing? experience. Yeah. But that's like literally DSDF. <laughs> yeah. DSDF is much more palatable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Someone said I would never admit I watched this podcast. Okay. I get that. That one <laughs> that one hurts way less really? than two TikTokers that started a podcast. No, I agree it hurts less. Who wrote that in? Um I, should I <coughs> put her completely on the One hundred percent, yeah. Cindy? Cindy. Everyone say hi to Cindy. 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 <laughs> she Sorry, listens to Cindy. this podcast, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, she does. Be well. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp. This time of year, I, I don't even need to say it, can be a because I, I, I have the question box open. I found out that everyone's in the same boat. It's a, it's a bag of mixed emotions for yeah. all of us. And, you know, the changing weather into summer can bring on some seasonal blues for me personally. Then there's the family. There's finding the there's finding the perfect gifts. There's the hustle and bustle of holiday shopping. There's just a lot of stressors, a lot of outside factors. And because it's a lot, it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change. Something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. Therapy has been an incredibly positive experience for me. It offers a safe space that has helped me gain self-awareness and understand the root causes of my challenges. With therapy, I've learned positive coping mechanisms that have allowed me to become my, the best version of myself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash B-A-N-D-C today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash B-A-N-D-C. Okay. This one I liked a lot. Okay. One is a voice of reason. The other is feral, but it's a coin toss on who is who. It switches. Uh, addicted to that. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Okay. Okay. This is somebody. Well, that's, someone else wrote in and or someone, someone tweeted the other day. Um and said like e this is how i think of every podcast host and it was mike wazowski and the and and big furry man sully sully yeah and i was like i don't know who would be who in that um two kids talking about stuff they like to eat and do okay like <laughs> i feel like what we eat is like not a huge part of the pot i don't think so either Oh, yeah, this is good. The kind of comedy that makes you feel like you're high, but also you might be a genius. Yeah, that's on God. Okay, this is where the questions, I, I start asking questions, okay? Hit me. Satire comedy. Hilarious, but because it's so dumb. This is not satire. <laughs> that's the thing, which I think a lot of people are confused about. <laughs> I would say it's a little bit satire. Like sometimes, but the overall. Sometimes I pretend to be a misogynist because I, I know that people eat that up. I would say like sometimes we are exaggerated versions of yes, ourselves. Yes. A lot of the time. Yeah. But overall, we are being ourselves. And I think that is the good thing about the podcast. It is not a satire. 
in, in, yeah. in no, full. Yeah, no, I get that. In full. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Tim Dillon said. He said either this is a brilliant satire or they're the dumbest people in the world. That one we There's got to be a happy medium. No, that though. one was when we were like asking uh, like where Ukraine or like what Ukraine was. Oh, where it was. Which was actually us being dumb. Yeah. That wasn't fake. No, that wasn't. But we've, that, we've, unfortunately, that We've wasn't. always said geography is not our strong suit. Yeah, now I'm I not. Agree. I'm never going to know. I agree. I'm never going to know even here, not even across the pond. Where is you don't live a, not even in across, the across the in the give across. me a state give me a state let me try to tell you give me one state Pennsylvania Brooke I have no clue where Pennsylvania is and I'm being 100 percent gun to my head I would I'd say upper right hand of the United States I feel like I'm pretty good about states just not some countries um, and Idaho to me I thought that was by Pennsylvania. Idaho? Yeah, but in my defense, there's Iowa. There shouldn't be I, Idaho I was and right, Iowa. I was right in the middle of the thing. I agree that we could have more creative names for states, but... Okay, okay. Now, someone said, two of the dumbest people you've ever seen having a okay, brilliant are, conversation. If you don't know us... They're, they're first getting, of all, you wouldn't call someone you know the dumbest person in the world. Why would you call someone you don't know the dumbest person? This is when I start to get... These are hurting my feelings. Yeah. I think we should move. Yeah. We should move. No, here's there's some nice ones again. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. I say it is the best slash funniest podcast, but if, if you're a boy, you probably won't get it. What do you think about that? We have that? a lot of boy listeners and and adult married men with kids. Who? He wrote in a question the other day, like when we did questions last time. An adult male? An adult man what married did he ask? with kids. I can't remember. Oh, the point system. Oh my gosh, that's when we started talking about Bridget Brown. Not Bridget Brown. Brene? Brene Brown. <laughs> oh, okay. That was it. So overall, awesome, awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Um, Yeah. We need to like get more definite. Should we be smarter or should we just keep rolling with what we have? Here's the thing. I think that I, do, I truly in my heart of hearts do not think we are dumb people. I think that most people would be afraid to admit how little they know about random things on camera. And we don't, we're kind of shameless about that. Sorry, my roommate just told me we have someone staying at our house and I was really enjoying my time. I'm sorry to hear that. By myself that. in my house. Now I'm sweating a little bit. I'm sorry to hear that. As a roommate, you probably say, hey, is it cool if this person stays at our yeah. house? Not, hey, hopefully you're home because... And is your roommate there? No. So it's just you and this individual yes. that you don't know. That's fun. That's great. I cannot wait to find my apartment by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm excited be for that for you. I'm tired of every day something happening that makes me want to punch a hole in drywall. I got really angry last night because um, my closet door is, you know, those just mirrors that are the closet door. Mm -hmm. That started to piss me off last night. Look, if you start getting mad at an inanimate an inanimate <laughs> object, here's here's my here's here's what it is. Okay, you either need to vibe check yourself. You need to vibe check yourself. If you're mad at things, you are need to eat something. It's not that I was mad. It was just I became frustrated at the design, right? Because putting doors that are mirrors like that really just doesn't give me the opportunity to make my room look like what I would want it to look like. Could I take the mirrors off of the closet? Not, no, not really. My thought, if you're mad at stuff or everybody, if everybody's pissing you off. It's you. You, no, no, no. It's both of these answers are it's you, but in different ways. I said, I made a TikTok about this. If you're mad at other people, if you're mad at everybody, if everybody's pissing you off, have something to eat. Perhaps a perfect bar. Are you sponsored by them? No, I want to be. <laughs> if 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 you feel like everyone's mad at you and you're getting frustrated at things like and everything nothing's working your way, you're tired. Take a nap. Yeah. T so everyone's mad at you, take a nap. You're mad at everybody, have something to eat. That's my advice. It usually boils down to those two options. Okay. And if those don't work, also and both reasons, you can also just go to sleep. I love going to sleep to I, escape I all issues. I kind of hate being awake. Me too. That, you know what that is? 
depression. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have. I don't no. think I, I'm depressed. I don't think so. But that is like a sign if you're ever wondering. Oh, OK. Yeah. But also you can just like to take naps and not be depressed. That's fine, too. Yeah. Fact. Right. Do you want to hear the most interesting thing? So I bet a lot of people are home right now in um, different areas of the globe. We had a bunch of people from New Zealand write in about Thanksgiving traditions, which I love remembering that there's people outside of the United States. Do people have think is Thanksgiving in New Zealand? Everywhere. Uh, is it? No, wait. I'm I don't think that up. See, oh, I'm sorry. Because I wrote in, write in your Thanksgiving or holiday traditions, and a lot of those were Christmas. Yeah, I think, I don't think Thanksgiving is universal. You're right. Although it should be. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. So yeah. Thanksgiving is a national holiday celebrated in various states in the United States, Canada, Granada? Yes. St. Lucia. Is, what is Granada? It's, it's in Spain? Or no, or it's a country. Uh, see, this is, she, we're not afraid to think out loud. Okay, let's circle okay. back to Granada. It is a country in the Caribbean. Awesome. That's what I had so said. If anyone didn't know, now you know. Mm -hmm. Liberia. <laughs> now, where the fuck is Liberia? <laughs> like, where's Liberia? I, I have an idea of where it is, but I'm scared to say. Is it in Africa? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is West Africa. Okay. Right. So they're enjoying Thanksgiving as well. Um, and unofficially in countries like Brazil and the Philippines. Okay. It is also observed in the Dutch town of Leiden in the Australia territory of Norfolk Island. That's very specific. Isn't there a Granada in Spain, though? Yeah. Okay. Granada. I wonder why Liberia in West Africa is celebrating Thanksgiving. It's certainly not our traditional Thanksgiving mm -hmm. that we celebrate. Yeah. And if I were to... Yeah, good job, bro. Thanks. If I were to go through, um, you know, how I was taught Thanksgiving, it was that... Christopher Columbus, mm -hmm. the nicest man in the universe, came over and made friends with all of the Native American people mm -hmm. um, in the 13 colonies. And they had a grand old time and they celebrated each other and, and they exchanged gifts, gifts and ways of farming, practices of farming. However, I think it was more of a bit of maybe a, a massacre yeah, and a spreading of polio and other diseases that to the Native American people. We had a whole unit in school about how to appropriately teach Thanksgiving. Yeah. I wish I could teach it to you, but I forget every single piece. No, don't worry. Yeah. Because um, I just love, like, I went uh, to mass with my grandma in Michigan and they have like paintings of like Christopher Columbus, like walking arm in arm with like a tribal leader. And I was like, that is very cute. But then I was like, I don't think that's how it went down. Right. I'm going to go out in a limb. Right. I agree. That's not how it went down. Fat, like fog. Fog. Yeah. So he came and, you know, whatever. So now we celebrate. And I'm going to sing the song again because I sing it every year on Thanksgiving. Okay. <clears throat> thankful. Thankful. I am thankful. Oh, wait. I don't remember how it goes. Okay. You did a good job with thankful, what you had. Thankful for the things I have. Thankful yeah, oh. for the things I have. Thankful for the. Mm -hmm -hmm. And then I think we went around in a circle and. Thank you, God. Thankful. Yeah. Oh, I am thankful. Yeah. Um. Everyone should have a Thanksgiving in the sense of just like having a day to focus on what you're grateful for. Right. Well. Um. What are you thankful for? I guess. Um. My health. Yeah. What are you thankful for? BNCMAP. That's great. Yeah, me too. BNCMAP. This year, I should say. What are you thankful for? My health. BNCMAP. Um, my bed. And my, my friends. Cool. How about you? Clarity. What have you gotten clarity on recently? Things? Stuff? It's the year of clarity? It's the year of realizing things. Oh, God. Fog. Hey, guys. We want to take a break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Lumi. Picture this. I've just finished my Thanksgiving dinner, and the meat sweats are starting. Oh, yeah. I can see that. But Real. instead of racing to reapply deodorant, I'm cool as a cucumber. Why? Because I use Lumi. Lumi is a one-of-a-kind whole-body deodorant. 
It was created by an OBGYN who discovered odor isn't just an underarm thing. It's an all over thing. Mm -hmm. So she developed a pH optimized DO that's clinically proven to control odor everywhere for up to 72 hours, even through the world's worst meat sweats. Facts. And I've got great news for everybody listening. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with code BANDC at lumideodorant.com. As a whole body deodorant, the first of its kind, by the way, Lumi is a seriously safe, Lumi is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Let me rattle them off. Ready? Pits, under boobs, thigh folds, belly buttons, butt cracks, vulvas, and feet. I've been using my Lumi under my arms before my runs. It's definitely been a, like a good addition to my routine. I also put it in between my balls and my thighs, <laughs> which they didn't add that to the list. I'll do it. That was nice. Um, same glands there as your armpits, so why would I not? Our producer, Izzy, who, who we miss very dearly, dearly today, dearly. uses it before she rides her horse, and she always smells so good. You would never know she was in the I barn. literally wouldn't. No. Um, Lumi is clini- clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. How, you may ask? Unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, hate that. Lumi is yeah. formulate. That sucks. Yeah, that does suck. That's like spraying Febreze. I was after, just gonna say after leaving the bathroom yeah. after my Thai food yeah. dinner. Yeah. Yeah, and ice cream dinner. Yeah. Heed my warning yet again. I'll <laughs> say it. Do not do that. Um, you don't want to spray like yeah. ocean breeze over that because Connor, I agree with you. Was you there a sewage spill in that yeah, ocean you don't breeze? Have to convince me. Uh, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. More like a pre deodorant. Pre odorant. Pre odorant. Mm hmm. What do you think about that? I love it. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code BANDC at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter Whoa. pack. Yeah, when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code BANDC. See. Thanks, Lumi. Um, uh, well, all I was going to say is that in many places of the country, sorry, we're going to slug along here. Yeah. In many places Didn't of the country. did you have stuff that you wanted to say? Yes. And this is going to be a deep dive into leaf blowing. So hope everybody's sitting down. I hope you have a snack, perhaps a drink. Um, so leaf blowing. I've just, I've, I went on this deep dive about leaf blowing because in my family, I would, that was my job, leaf blowing. And I remember that, I think I told it on the podcast that day that I was so mad for some reason at my dad. I should have had a snack or taken a nap, but instead I went out to leaf blow and I poured, there's a little motor on the thing. I poured the gas in and it sprayed up into my eyes and then I punched a hole in the drywall. Um, and I was going through this tweet and this tweet said, and this is so Twitter, mm-hmm. you know, right now. Why, why leaf blowing is problematic. Okay. They are being serious when they say that. Okay. And I went through, I said, let me humor this thread. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A bright and shining example of the suicidal absurd absurdity yeah. of the techno capitalist society that occurs every year at this time all across the country. The picture, you might ask? A pile of leaves. I said, color me intrigued mm-hmm. by this. Did you ever have to rake leaves? No, actually. I would have to rake leaves every year. Deciduous trees spend all spring taking nutrients out of the soil to make leaves, which photosynthesize all summer and fall. When the, when the cold comes, those leaves fall, and the trees go in dormant in, in the winter. All across this great land, people proceed to fire up specialized machines called leaf blowers, which burn irreplaceable fossil fuels pumped out of the ground at great expense to produce, in addition to carbon monoxide noise, powerful blasts of forced air. They blow the leaves into piles, rake them into huge bags. We put them in these plastic bags, which go and they, they get put in landfills, and then they decompose. And the way that they decompose is in a bad way. They release, they can decompose in several ways. You know, like stuff can release bad mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. and good stuff. Mm-hmm. The way that they decompose in the, in the, in the landfill is bad. Okay. Why, ju- why is it just bad in the landfill? They turn into slime and sulfurous gases. Just in the landfill? They wouldn't do that in the, in your yard? No, because these bags full of leaves oh, are the then bag? loaded into trucks, which burning fossil okay. fuels move them into giant okay. landfills where leaves trapped in plastic undergo anaerobic decon- decomposition. Oh, I can get on board with anaerobic decomposition. And rather than releasing their nutrients back into the soil, they release their sulfurous gases. This entire process means that Don't we all? We are all releasing sulfur- At any sulfurous point of gases. the day. 
Why is it a problem when leaves do it? Well, because this entire process means that wherever modern humans congregate, the soil quickly becomes impoverished and the nutrients required for cyclic leaf production are removed rather than stored in the ground, producing a gray, dusty soil that when I was in a pre- when I was a professional gardener, I immediately recognized and referred to as blower disease. So you can no longer, it's not, it's no longer usable soil to grow things. So next time your dad says, go rake the leaves, say, fuck you, dad. This needs to be usable soil for generations Mm -hmm. and say all those words exactly. And it will go over really well while you're home for Thanksgiving with your family. Yeah. I personally never understood the point of moving leaves to a different place. Well, jump in them. That's what I did. Well, that was, yeah, in a pile. But they say like leave them out in your yard because then they decompose and they release it back into the soil. Yeah. Yeah. That feels fun. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing. I had to because it caught me so off guard. I was like, this all makes sense. And it's like, I almost had a hankering. Like I had a premonition that like leaf blowing was evil when the gas went. Oh, you had a hankering. Like long ago. Yeah. That it was evil. And now I'll never do it again because I'm, I'm a, I'm an activist. Yeah. You're very, very publicly anti-leaf blowing. That's like your one massive public stand. Yes. Yeah. Um, we also had a, like a lot of people write in to share their Thanksgiving yeah, I traditions. Hear those. Most of them, bless your heart, were I get in a fight with my family and then I black out mm-hmm. from drinking. Uh, wishing you guys all the best. I'll probably, I might do something similar. We don't know yet. Do you have any that you want to share before you get into it? No, but this year I think I'm going to switch it up and take an, a weed edible before dinner because Thanksgiving dinner is one of my favorite things ever because I used to not be able to let foods touch. And so in a, in a celebration of adulting, I can now have all my foods touch almost like I could put them in a blender and blend them up and drink my Thanksgiving dinner. I don't care. It's one big, the best meals that I eat are look like slop that you would feed like a pig. Yeah. You've been having a lot of gummies recently. Yeah. Do you enjoy it now? Um, are you just still trying to force yourself? No, I go into like almost comatose. I'm frozen completely still. So why do you keep doing it? Food tastes more good. (laughs) (laughs) Like, okay. And I make like, I genuinely become Gordon. What's his name? Ramsey. Like, I'm like, go into rain man mode. I'm like. I'm like seeing the equations of recipes go c- across. I'm like, I need sriracha and I need peanut butter and I need like, I'm like reaching for things I've never used. Uh-huh. I'm like, I wonder if we have like truffles in this house and we always do because of Hank. And I like, I've been concocting the craziest things, which is probably why I've been shitting my pants on the set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I like, could explain. Last night I had chicken and rice, like, which is what you feed a dog when they have really bad diarrhea. Uh-huh. Because I was like, I don't want to have what happened yesterday right, happen right. again. Um, but we're good. we're in the clear, like good. I said. We're out of the woods now. Out of the woods. Before um, you were lost. This is kind of a funny one. Okay. This is A lot of these were ended up being for holidays because I didn't know if people have like different Thanksgiving traditions. A lot of cousin walks occur on Thanksgiving. People going out on a walk with their cousin, smoking weed. I did that one year and full blown was like i think like my family's against me like you have a lot of cousins yeah it's hard to get together for thanksgiving Mm -hmm. because we're all so spread out people can't get work off but um this girl said her dad makes me write pre or rap presents myself and then i write love and a random woman's name on it to like piss her family off thinking that her dad got a gift from like a random woman Oh, that's and good. and we do that bit together. I don't know how they how do ma- it. How do they keep doing it without? Maybe it's just like goofy. I don't know. The first year, you, I might do that to my parents this year. Cause some. What? Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Dad has a second family. Mm-hmm. Oh. That could be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. He's always in the yard. I'm like, maybe he has a. You know, he's like, I'm gonna go work on the yard. Maybe he has a second family in that. In that. In the leaf in pile. That, in that hedge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing out there? Every time I'm home, my mom's like, go help your dad with the yard. Go see if he needs help in the yard. And I'm, I walk out and I'm like, Dad, Dad. I'm like, Oh, do you need help in the yard? He can't hear me. He's like almost deaf. So I just, just talk really quietly and then come back in and tell my mom that he doesn't need help. Um, 
bowling every Christmas Eve and we bowling when we get back. That's precious. It's, Do it's, you like bowling? I hate putting my fingers in the ball. I don't like. I have I have fun bowling when I get there, but like the the thought of getting there. No, nah. terrible. Yeah, the shoes as well. I don't mind the shoes. Oh, really? Yeah. Also, you don't understand what it's like to be 4'11 and be in shoes with absolutely no lift whatsoever. I can't look anyone in the eye. The kids at the arcade. I'm so far down. I'm so, so far down. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Can you lift a bowling ball? Yeah, a six pounder. Oh. (laughs) Yeah, I could see you like cartoon vibes, like tossing a bowling ball into the thing. And no, I'm good. Going I'm pretty it. good. <laughs> you you are? know, I have good hand eye coordination. Do I know that? I've told the story. <laughs> of what story? Of my softball coach who oh, said yes. I have hand eye coordination that one cannot teach and then immediately got arrested for armed robbery. That was one of the many things he got arrested for, right? Mostly just armed robbery that I know of. Who did he arm rob? Who did he arm rob? No one that I know, actually. It was kind of just like he stopped showing up and then a quick Google search was able to reveal armed robbery. Armed robbery. Yeah. I wonder but he, he was... kept getting kicked out of the games and sent to the bus, which like girls JV softball. You're getting that upset that you actually are removed from the field. I had a lot yeah. of friends' parents like that, which they would get removed every game. Yeah. I was like... It's probably good. Like we're, none of us are good enough to play in college. Mm-hmm. This is just for fun. Yeah, it's a game after all. Yeah, it wasn't a game to him. It was his life. It wasn't for for very long. Cause and then it got taken away from him because of his choice to arm rob, arm <laughs> armed rob. That's the beautiful yeah. thing about free yeah. wills. He, yeah, he chose to arm rob. Yeah, yeah. Arm rob. But anyway, Pattinson. that's best thing he did was tell me I have a hand eye coordination that one cannot teach. <laughs> that will stick with you. You forever. literally cannot teach it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well. Mm-hmm. This girl said. This what is- else do you? Will I be good at with hand eye coordination? Knitting. Well, I think no. that's fine motor. You'll be good. Um, Bowling, softball, driving. Mm, no, that's not it. Yeah. It's kind of like maybe darts. Bowling isn't hand eye. It's the definition of hand eye. Brooke, hand eye, hand, literally ball, hand in the ball, eye on the pin, needing to make ball to pin target uh, contact, contact. Yeah, but like no definition. Nothing's of hand like eye. no hand eye is like I I see something coming, I grab it with my hand, right? But it, both. But like, is there hand eye coordination required in in bowling? I I guess it's literally your hand and your eye fusing. Well, like. <laughs> you become hand eye. Okay. Forgive me, Iron Man. I didn't know that. I do. Okay, I wouldn't. My have Iron pegged. Man catching fly balls. Yeah. As the first step, bowling with bumpers. By the way, I'm doing. I'm bumper mode is on. Bumper mode. Yeah. I know what. I know what the third thing is. You know how in some bars they have that ring that's attached to a rope and then a hook. Yep. That's so. That's so. That's so good at that. That's hand eye yeah. way more than bowling. But yeah. now I'm understanding the connection that bowling would require. Okay, hand so eye. that's my Iron Man. Um, I have hand eye. But sounds like we're talking about a someone disease. Someone taught it to you. <laughs> I have really se- taught it to you. I have really severe and contagious <laughs> hand eye. And uh, no, it's it's not taught. It's not taught. I was way better at soccer than I was like at football. But I'm good at tennis. That's good hand eye. Yeah, tennis is hand eye. Hand eye. What sport is not hand eye? Soccer's not hand eye. It's hand and foot, or it's eye and foot. It's hand. It's eye foot. I don't think soccer has much to do with hand eye. Now that you mention it, you can't use your hands. Right. So it'd be, it would be. It would be eye foot. Yeah. Hand eye. It, hand eye. Foot eye. Foot eye coordination. Swimming. Water eye. You know, I was on the water polo team. <laughs> I knew that. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to share anything about no, it? No, that's it. I didn't get to play much. <laughs> I would. I don't think I actually, speaking of hand eye, I don't think I touched that ball once. Um, well, you weren't given the opportunity. I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, what was I going to say? Oh Golf my gosh. is really good hand eye. About my, about my hand eye. What was I going to say? Oh, I have decent hand eye, but I get so... <laughs> 
in my head about it that like oh you get the yips i get the yips about my hand eye yeah i have this one memory from freshman year of college i'm walking through the quad and this dude is like and i'm like i, I had my headphones and i was like how's it going and i keep walking and then a frisbee hits me in the side of my head in the quad which is like and i i realized that i had looked like i was like toss me the frisbee and he was like, do you want me to toss mm-hmm. you the Frisbee? And I had accepted via oh. this. And I'm walking and it hit me. And then because it hit me, I was so embarrassed that when I threw it, it did that thing where like a Frisbee turns sideways and rolls. And then I just went home for yeah. the rest of the day. I don't blame you. And it's in my head, stuck in my head. I'll never forget. Yeah. Now, anytime someone throws me at something, I'm like, Frisbee, 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 Frisbee. It's going to hit you in the face. Those it's going to like, you're going to drop you. it. Like, Do you ever think about how stupid it is that people say heads up when something's about to hit you? Well, if you're staring at your phone, that that's never made more sense than today. Well, I'd rather keep my head. It's going to hit me. Listen, if they're saying heads up, it's already well <laughs> it's on too the late. Way. It's too late. Tell me to put, keep my head down. So it hits me on the back heads of down. the skull. So it hits me on the back of the skull. Or hands over your head where I can see them. Duck. Yeah. Duck. Yeah. yeah. Stop, drop, and roll even. Anything would be better than heads up in that scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys. We want to take a break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, StoryWorth. If you're spending time with loved ones for the holidays, chances are you're going to hear a lot of stories. Mm. The ones you love to hear and the ones you've heard too many Many times. But have you ever wanted to help your loved ones document those timeless stories? It can be challenging to write an entire book of life memories, but StoryWorth makes it fun and easy. This is how anyone can write a book about their life. Okay, let me walk you through it. Every week, StoryWorth will email your loved yeah. one a single life-related question that you pick from their collection, like what's the bravest thing you've ever done or what's the farthest you've traveled? All they have to do is reply with a story. Then after a year, StoryWorth compiles your loved one's stories, memories, and even any photos into an exquisite hardcover book. And it creates this thing that you mm-hmm. keep. I, I I, need to get it for Mimi this year, mm-hmm. my, my grandma. Yeah. I'm going to see her next week, this week, next week. Um, but I got it for my dad last year because I panicked and I, I needed yeah. a gift that meant something. Yeah. He was obsessed with it. Yeah. It sends it to his email. You know, he's retired now. so like, Which he loved. He like loved popped on thing. and yeah. like filled it out and he would text me every time he did it. And I'm waiting on the book so it hasn't been a full year. But it should, it should be interesting. Yeah, I can't wait for you. Maybe you'll show us. I Millions of stories have already been told. But, but I'm also looking forward to it. Because they make the process so simple. Get started with your loved one for the holidays. And before you know it, you'll both be cherishing those timeless stories for generations to come. When I sent StoryWorth to my family, I learned what nicknames my grandparents had when they were kids, which was so fun to hear. That always is so fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm like, you know, you're lying. Because why have I never heard this? Right. Anyways, help your family <laughs> share their stories this holiday season with StoryWorth. Go to storyworth.com slash BNC today to save $10 off your first purchase. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash B-A-N-D-C to save 10 bucks on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash BNC. Do you hear something so damn dark? Kind of. Do you know that on the plane when you're supposed to put your head down? And like an emergency, and like if you're in a crash, it's so that your neck just breaks and like you don't, you aren't in pain. No, I made that up. I think just now. That but can't. That's not right. I think it just. I think that can't be right. I don't know. Let's not look into it because it's like not what I want to talk about today. Okay. But they said this. This is a tradition for Brooke for Thanksgiving. The Wawa Gobbler. Mm, I never tried it. I don't like to. Try th- new things. What's the Wawa gobbler? Can we? Look I up think it's just gobbler? like a Thanksgiving sandwich. It sounds like, it sounds like the man like turkey that, gravy. Et it sounds like the man that would murder you in in upstate New yeah. York. The Wawa gobbler is on the loose. Yeah. So, the classic hot turkey gobbler bowl. I don't like hot hot sandwiches. I I don't like eating things that are called the gobbler. That doesn't bother me. There was a girl that I went to college with that. We called her the gobbler. I'm not going to press. She just like had a really good turkey call. Oh. She was okay. from she was from uh, totally. Arkansas. Totally. Oh, my God. You know what actually is the best part about Wawa? What? The hash browns. You love your, your hash browns. I love potatoes. Uh, you know Great White in Venice Beach? Mm-hmm. They just started serving a breakfast sandwich that's, that's sausage cheese sausage egg and the egg is like very fluffy folded 
egg. How hash do you brown. Folded? Like they they fold it up like this and get, like it's it's flat and okay. they fold it up. It's not runny. They no, they fold it up like a crepe. Okay. And then they put it on and <laughs> then they do a hash brown that's like a thick uh-huh. rectangle on top and then the most delicious brioche bun I, you've ever tasted in yeah, your life. Yeah. In your goddamn life. Yeah. Uh, I would do that. I don't like sausage. Did you know that? That's crazy. Yeah. But if I like bacon. Does that help? So like a bacon, egg, and cheese I would adore. On the brioche as well. DSDF. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we go from here? I don't know. Did you want to keep reading traditions? No. Here, this is another you one You said you had you. a lot to talk about. Here's another one for you. Pollyanna. What do you know about Pollyanna? Oh, isn't that like a, a gift exchange of sorts? Does Brooke get this because apparently it's only a Philly thing? It, it They did it in the office too. Pollyanna? I'm pretty sure it's a like a gift exchange where like you put all the gifts in the middle of the room or a circle or whatever have you. And then one person goes and picks a gift and then the next person goes and picks a gift and they can trade with the person before without the person before is being it, able to stop it. Is it just Secret Santa? No, no. Did is you anyone else thinking like that, that that is word for word Secret Santa? No, Secret Santa is when you know who you're giving your gift to and you give it to them. Oh, I'm sorry. White elephant. That's a white elephant. That's what I meant. What I just explained? Yeah. I think so. I think it's the same thing. Oh, cool. Okay. Do you have any hot cousins? I feel like I feel like that's something that we can just let's be open and honest about it. We've all got one. I don't have any hot first cousins. Yeah. I'm the oldest <laughs> I'm the oldest by far. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, I do have a hot first cousin. Cousin Ben and, and yeah. And there it is. Cousin Ben is, is so gorgeous. Nope. And I tell him that every day. Guess what? No, no other podcast is talking about hot, first, how hot first our first cousins, cousins are. Yeah. Um, and then I do have a lot of hot second cousins. Oh, let's dive into that. <coughs> I'd rather right. not say him by name, honestly. You don't have to. <laughs> Just due to me not really knowing them well. I know cousin Ben well, and so I feel comfortable saying that about him publicly. I don't know the second cousins that well. Okay, that's cool. You know, I'm I'm not gonna press. Also. Okay, how about you? Um, yeah, of course. And it's also just like a thing out of respect. Like, congrats, you get hot cousin award. There's only one, and mm-hmm. you know, and um, that's a big thing. It's such a dangerous thing too, because like a lot of people in parts of the country that I won't name because I think I'm touring them are drinking a lot and are going to be around their hot cousins. And, you know, it's just like, be careful. <laughs> just like practice, safe, family fun. Alabama. Okay. That's what Thank I'm going to say. Okay. Can I ask one question? Like, because we obviously already got here. Is incest illegal? <laughs> <laughs> Like, actually, is it, like, against the law? I don't know if it's actually, like, against the law, but I know, like, you can't le- you can't legally marry mm. your sibling. Sexual relations between family members who are not spouses, formerly known as incest, is illegal across the U.S. because of the harm it can cause to family relationships. Wait, that's the, what? That, that, that's the reason that, that they're incesting. That seems like a... In- is incest a crime? Inbreeding between two people who are closely related yeah. genetically may result in birth. So it's like... It, but has anyone ever been actually like taken to jail? Like I'd be interested in reading the transcript of a court case. Oh, I don't want to see anyone that was arrested. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> now we're going to visualize people that were yeah. arrested for incest. And and I don't want to do yeah. that. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Pass. I met... A, a pair of first cousins that had a child. Did they know? The child didn't know. Did they know? They yes. They yeah, okay. Knew. That's that should be illegal. I agree with the. And they were part from a part of the country that. I, I don't even know what to say about it. Oops. Yeah, I I think like that that is actually like the only option that they had in that from where they were. My like Slim Pickens, racing. like Slim Pickens kind of vibes. Slim Pickens kind of vibes. Guess what? Huh? They're not a tree. They can move. You can't, like, sometimes you just, like, can't, though, when you grow up in the environment of just, like, 
you get stuck. Okay, well, bloom where you're planted doesn't require you to fuck someone you're related to, I have to say. I, like, can't, I don't, I'm not qualified to speak on the psychology of it. Right. (laughs) Obviously, something's a mess. But, anyways. We have, let's move on to some popsy, because I'm out of, Okay. to be honest, you guys, like, I was really expecting some fun holiday traditions. Everyone's doing the same thing. Like, straight up. The most interesting thing was that that girl pretends that her dad's having an affair with another mm-hmm. woman every Christmas. Mm-hmm. Which like, I was like, okay, that's fun. But right. like the rest, let's see. A family fight every year without fail. And then there are a lot of people do, oh my gosh, this one's kind of cool. Okay. Every year their family celebrates on Thanksgiving the switching out of um, the normal poopery spray to the holiday scented poopery oh, spray. Oh, that's a nice tradition. Changing of the guards. The changing of the guards. Yeah. Yeah. Spruce walks has entered the chat. That's good. Holiday uh, fur, maybe a fur. That is a scent that will cover up re- bat sh- sh- smell of poop. <laughs> is free. is fur trees? F I R. Oh, fur. <laughs> I thought I was thinking a fur coat. No, uh, maybe a fur coat. Maybe I don't know. Um, would you ever run? Okay, say you've okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. He's a ten. But his family does the 5K and you have to do it with him on, at both holidays. Mm-mm. No? You're out? Mm-hmm. A 5K is three miles. I, know, I understand okay. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you're given time. You're given time to prepare. This is the love of your life. No? I can't. I, my body will not allow for it. And if I'm being forced to do something that my body physically cannot do, that's it's not going to work. It's not going to work it's for like, you? It's actually like abusive when you really think about it. Well, like it's a family, say it's a family tradition for them. Like, are you going to come into their family and be like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I will support them from the sidelines with everything I have. And if that's not enough, then, then, then it's not enough. Are you saying his family is like hating me for that? Or he is? No one's hating you for that. But like, they're like, oh, this is what we do. Like you're a part of the family now. Like we do this. Okay, and if I don't do it, which I'm not going to, then what? Like, is it better to have loved and lost than have never run the 5K at all? No, but I'm saying, like, what are the consequences? You're, you're out. That's the end. Oh, then I can't, I can't do it. I don't know what. Like, I can't run. I'll walk it. You can walk, oh, a, I'll you walk can, it. You can yeah. walk a turkey trot. I'll walk it, but I don't like, like the fact that they're forcing me to do something. No one's forcing. You, you could also break up. So it's not a he's a 10, but it's a would you in order to. He's a 10, but you're forced to participate in the turkey trot. That's what the if is. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I can walk it. Okay, cool. Tight, 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 tight. I'll let him know. <laughs> so they've people have found Travis Kelsey's old tweets, and they're from, how old is Travis Kelsey? Do we know? Oh my God. Awesome question. How old is Travis Kelsey? He could be anywhere from 28 to 30, 48. He's 34. That right smacked out of okay. the middle. Um, so in 2011 he would have been. Oh no, math. Um, I'll do it. Okay. 22. So Isn't he, it amazing that you can really only do math with your eyes closed? Oh, you too. I can't. Cannot do math with my eyes. No, open. I had to actually have not no light leaks either. I had <laughs> yeah. to do this. Okay, yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Can anyone do math with their eyes open? Because do you see it? In your head? I wasn't visualizing anything. I guess I'm not seeing anything either, so what is it? I guess it's distracting to see things. PEMDAS, PEMDAS, PEMDAS. That was the only thing. I guess you need to mute all of your other senses when you your brain needs to be working in a complete overdrive to do simple subtraction. We're also not dumb. We said it <laughs> We said it earlier. This is not a dumb person podcast. We just can't do math or geography. Yeah. Fog. Fog. What are we good at? What are we good at then? There's five subjects, four subjects. What are the main subjects? Science. Literature, I feel good at. Okay. I'm, but I don't feel like we do that on the podcast. Math. What math can't do. Yeah. History, God History, for, no. Mm. Horrible. Science. Oh, we're great at science. Science is our kind of kink. Yeah. Science <laughs> is the sweet spot. We have a science kink. Um, well, okay. So he, has, he's, he was a 22-year-old with tweets that reads things like, um, so they're, they're finding Travis Kelsey's old tweets. Right. And someone tweeted, um, Basically, like, no one's talking about how problematic the mental 
age gap is between Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey right. because he is operating at a 17 year old, right? Which is a minor's right. reading level right. and like that, you know, mental level, right? And because they found his old tweets as a 20, 21, 22 year old that said things like, I just gave a squirrel, which is spelled S Q U I R L E, squirrel, a piece spelled P E I C E <laughs> of bread and it straight smashed all of it. I had no idea they ate bread like that. Ha <laughs> ha. Hashtag crazy. This is what's so awesome about this is usually when you dig up old tweets, it's like, oh, shoot, this is a horrible person. And what you get with Travis Kelsey is just like super endearing. The moon looks crazy tonight. Da, da, da. I'm going to chill out here for a little and just visualize my success and vibe to the scenery. Scenery. S-C-E-N-A-R-Y. Facts. Not, I was going to say not one thing hasn't been a fact so far. The question, Q-U-S-T-I-O-N, isn't how you stop us because frankly, F-R-A-N-K-L-E-Y, you can't stop what's supposed to happen. The question is which one of us is going to shine? I genuinely believe, especially now, when we have autocorrect spelling has like no relation to how smart you are zero i'm good at spelling okay like it can mean you're smart it can mean you're like it just doesn't have much of a connection i don't think when you live in the age of autocorrect yeah and like the last time i had a Ask me how spelling to spell test was second grade ask me how to spell something pick something um, nece- necessary. N e c e s s a r y. I think that's true. I think that's right. How about? I visualized it though. I guess you're right, and I didn't even have to close my eyes to do that. How about conscious? C o n s c i o u s. Maybe I think so. Yeah. Whoa! All of a sudden, I'm remembering every single word that was ever on a spelling test. You know, you know what I got out in third grade. What was my word that got me out of the spelling bee? What? Third place, place mosquito. Spell it now. M o s q u i t o. I'll you never spell it. What? Like before. I don't remember, but I remember being like, "What? Why did I?" Because once you say one letter wrong, they're like, "Man, get off." Mm-hmm. I, the one word I have ever gotten wrong on a spelling test was essence. E s s e n c e. Yeah. I didn't do two S's. Ooh, that's tough. Yeah. Because, like, when you're a second grader sounding things out, why would that have two S's? Why does anything have a double letter? If you're not actually going, S-s-s. what's the point? It's not S, ints. Literary queen. On God. Okay, next tweet. Up at Olive Garden with Papa. Had to grab the fettuccine with the chicken Alfredo. Hashtag schmackin. Did you see the way that all of the brands were responding? No. It was funny. Hold on. Brands need to stay out of like something funny and nice. Watching an old school Bruce Lee movie with some Chipotle in my lap. Feeling nice and relaxed before I go study for this exam. I did that once. About to go go go-kart racing. (laughs) Haha. Hope I fit in the cart. This last one is just nap time in all caps with 100 exclamation points. Mm -hmm. He's sweet. No, he is sweet. This has actually really like changed my mind. Not that I didn't like them or anything before, but I just didn't really like care. And now I'm like, oh, he's precious. Also, I didn't realize he had so many good sketches when he hosted SNL that I've Mm. seen before, but I had no idea who he was. So I just like, yeah. Yeah. So I never like connected the dots. That shit's crazy. Yeah. Um. I just realized I think I like this water bottle because I've always wanted to drink out of one of those things hamsters drink out of. Oh, I just like I like chewing on the straw. It's like the exact same. Oh, or, like Frankie? Yeah. Like a nipple? No, no, no. That thing. Like was, an upside down water bottle that has this. That's will what this Frankie has. Do this? Yes, it will. That's what Frankie has. Um, yeah, I know. But, but I, she also has bowls. When I bowl. move into my next place above my bed, I want to make like a cool looking tank. Where I can put water in and have a tube that goes straight to my mouth. I think that's an awesome idea. You could do Tube City. That's Walk when me you, through that. You know, like the like blue and red and different colored tubes that hamsters have? You can make a giant hamster cage in your room. Tubes all throughout your room with the hamster just continuously going through. Oh, I don't and, want the ha- I don't want a single, hamster. I, tubes. Your whole room is tubes. I don't tube want City. that at all. Like, there's, like That's like... A nightmare to me. Tube City. What? I mean, no offense to you. 
I don't have because hamsters. That seems great. I know, but that seems like you would love Tube City the way that you're talking <laughs> about it. I just want the tank of water so that I, I don't lose my my tired when I get up in the middle of the night. Also, I keep having this thing recently. You need a giant so, camelback. So, well, I want to hook that to my. I don't yeah. want to sleep in a camelback. You need back. a camelback coming down. Yeah, coming I want to. I want to build it. I want to yeah. DIY it. You guys can be a part of that camelback process. Camelback pillow. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. With a pillowcase on it. Yes. Literally sleep on it. Like people sleep on water beds. Sleep on your camelback pillow. There's got to be technology. Not the kind of technology that's digital. The kind of technology that I don't understand. You know? Made with technology and it's a cloth, piece of cloth. I'll right. never get that. But Te- it is what it technology. is. Technology. Uh, Brooke, but when we create a product. Verbal trademark on the camelback pillow, by the way. And we won't use camelback. We'll make our own. Yeah. Um, verbal trademark with our technology. Um, another reason that I'm scared to get out of my bed at night now is because I convinced myself that like there's something in my mirror, like Bloody Mary. <gasps> and so I'm oh, too scared to look in the mirror. That. I know. Sorry. Everyone's got it now. If anyone like, you And know. you know I have mirrors as my closet doors. Oh, yeah. Now I know. Anyways. I hate my bedroom. Move. I'm trying. No. I need, I, I like... Need to do a, I want Zillow to do brand deals. That's so much easier said than done. I just told you to move. And yesterday I was like, I found the place. Every time I find a place, I'm like, this is the place of my dreams. I DM'd the realtor. I was the first contact. And I was like, hey, I will come over this afternoon. I'm totally free. I'll come over. He goes, we already accepted an application. I was like, so should I kill myself? I literally was about to message a realtor. Like I'm at my wit's end with Zillow. How did you already fill it? Why even upload it? Why even upload it, Jet Jerry? To me, I was just like name. avoid moving at all costs because oh, there's I'm, nothing I have stressful to, move. I have to, to me. move. No, I understand that. But like if there's not something forcing me to move, it's I don't know if I'll be able to. Like I need an outside source, i.e. Zillow needing my brand deal by EOD. You know? Does your brand deal, your brand deal would be moving into a nice apartment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I want that too. Yeah. Dream brand deal. <sighs> Zillow's not going to help us. You know what? You know who will? Taco Bell. When my ad drops a Taco Bell, throw it some love. Okay. That will be probably next week. Same with me um, with uh, Heinz gravy. So <laughs> <laughs> throw it uh, some love. No, I just, I, I just, I just want to say, anyways. Like, me going on record a few, uh, like last month, I'd love to work with anthropology or like. Heinz, uh, nothing wrong with Heinz gravy, obviously, that goes without saying. Just different stroke, different vibe. Different vibe. Really, totally addicted to it, though. Um, I had to film, I, I filmed my ad a couple of times. I I ate in one week seven Crunchwrap Supremes. Yeah. Breakfast Crunchwrap Supremes. I'm addicted. Taco Bell is one of the places that I could convince myself is good for me. No, Brooke, Brooke, I literally would be like about to work out and be like, it's just beans and rice and and sour cream and and lettuce and a tortilla, like, this is this is gonna power me through. This is genuinely what my body will turn into energy shortly. Um, what's I, wrong with that? No, but for a fact, my Chipotle order is like health health food. Like when I in college, like one of those alternative doctors was like, you need to not eat any like processed foods, gluten, dairy. Literally, I couldn't eat anything, and so I would eat my Chipotle bowl of like chicken and vegetables. Chipotle is like. So maybe it comes down to the, what we talked about last week, which was oil. Damn. Do you think Chipotle has oil? I fear. Yes. Even the, do you think they, do they make like meat and chicken and stuff like that with canola and vegetable oil as well? Maybe it comes down to the oils, Connor. I don't know, man. Oh my gosh. I was, I was doing something on Monday with someone who's just like a God among men and just like, works out everything and everything I was eating in front of him. You shouldn't eat that seed oils. You shouldn't drink that caffeine spikes your heart rate. Everything I was doing, I was like, it's over for me. Like I'm going to, my, I'm actually going to live longer than you because I'm so not stressed about all those things. And like, I can't imagine everything I pick up, like knowing that it's bad for me and being like, I I have to eat. I do fully agree that people that live like that, like it's, it's probably not worth it. Yeah. Like all those old people that are like, like, what's your secret to live longer? I smoked every single. I smoked yeah. a cigarette. I smoked a pack of cigarettes every single day for thirty years. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Smoking 
feel so good when you don't have a bitch in your ear telling you it's not healthy for you. I wouldn't. I don't promote smoking. Oh, I d- don't thing. smoke cigarettes at all. Yeah. I bite my fingernails though. Biting your fingernails feels so good when you have a when you don't have a bitch in your ear telling you it's bad for you. Yeah. Oh God. I think we close out this episode by giving Mark Ruffalo a shout out. I would love to do that. He's done nothing, but we salute you, Mark Ruffalo. 13 going on 30, one of the best rom-coms of all time. And I do really, like we were saying before the podcast started, Mark Ruffalo is of Paul Rudd caliber. We just don't talk about him as much. And I think that we should. So that's where we'll, that's what we'll leave you with. Yeah. Think about as you navigate the day to day, do so with Mark in mind. Uh huh. And you know what I'm thankful for? Mm, Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Me too. And stovetop stuffing. Perfect. If, Perfect if way to I, end the episode. My, no need to even go on. No, I want everyone to visualize this. Mark Ruffalo, you get a knock at your door. This is like a calm app story. Okay. Whisper it. Everyone, close your eyes as I take you on a journey. It's evening. You have a fireplace now, even though you didn't have one earlier. Your fireplace is on, and it's not putting out too much heat. Just right. But there's still like a little bit of a breeze from your AC, so you're not like too hot. And then you get a knock on your door. Two knocks. Like this. Now, you don't know who's at your door, but that was a familiar knock for some reason. Firm yet soft. (laughs) Oh my gosh, who is it? Who's there? Mark. You open the door, it's Mark Ruffalo. He's got two boxes of stovetop stuffing, one one in each hand. Under his arm is a newspaper. It's like, I can't believe you're writing your first fan fiction without even realizing it. It's it's a newspaper that he picked up at the end of your driveway because you forgot earlier. He comes in and goes, want to have some stuffing? (laughs) <laughs> and you're like, yeah, Mark, come on in. He comes in. He does all of the heavy lifting for the stuffing. While you gaze into the fire and think about days of yore. And finally, the stuffing is ready. And you say, oh, my gosh, wait. It's low-key kind of dry. And you pull out your Heinz gravy <laughs> that you bought because Brooke Averick, Averick, <laughs> Lady Afron, posted and influenced you to purchase. And then you open up the Taco Bell Rewards app and order a breakfast crunch wrap or Supreme <laughs> because Fibula, Connor would influence you to buy one. And then Mark sits not too close to you on the couch where you're like a little bit uncomfortable, but he sits on the couch next to you and he says, do you want to go through my discography and on my IMDB page? And I'll tell you about each of my roles and some background stories. And you say, yeah. And he tells you those until you fall asleep. And when you wake up, you realize it was all a dream. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope everyone is enjoying times with their, f- some good times with their family. I'm going to read Court of Two Thorns and Roses and um, enjoy time with your hot cousin or several cousins. If you have several hot cousins, we're all jealous. No one's brave enough to say it except us. Maybe learn some geography while you have some time or math. And don't be afraid to do math with your eyes closed while at the dinner table in front of your family that that doesn't think that your job is real and your cousin that has a finance job that's younger than you and making double what you make as he talks about his promotion don't be afraid to just sit and do some quick mental math while he talks about that brooke anything you want to close out with i'm good i think i covered it all i'm yeah i feel good remember anytime you're about to explode take three deep breaths and think about mark yeah. Okay. Thank you guys so much for listening. Happy we're, Thanksgiving, we're going, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. We're thankful for you. Mm-hmm. Me and Brooke are going to go into the bonus, and we have some Elmer's glue that we're going to glue, put all of our hands and peel off for sixty minutes. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. Me as well. So we'll see you guys. See you later. <laughs> this week on Close Friends, right, you're like all about that beat I, like, and all I, that bass. I'm well. First of all, I'm all about that bass. What do you know about integrity? Meet me in the parking lot (laughs) in 11 minutes. I've never felt a harder poop. Why are you touching this poop? Do you eat dog food as a kid? Uh, A couple times I have. Personally. Are you eating it? Are you eating the slime? No, I was going to see if I could blow a bubble with it. I'm going to eat it that little bit. 
Sign up on TMGstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.